Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm thrilled to have you join myself and our very special guest, Chantal Ray, here today. The show is all about helping you both look and feel your best. And the topic of today's discussion is weight loss and body composition. That little extra bit of weight around, especially our midsection or puffiness in the face, can actually tell us a lot about what's going on internally. Thank you so much, Chantal, for coming back on the show. You've been on the show a few times now. And for those of you who are hearing about you for the first time, I'd love for you to share a little bit about who you are and really your passion around body composition and weight loss and looking at our feet and feeling our best. Yeah. So I was one of those people that was always on a diet. Like I would try everything, you know, first I would count calories and then I would do this diet and that diet. I was always trying Atkins. And then I tried, you know, anything that was hot at the time. And literally, I'm not joking when I tell you, I had about 300 diet books on the top of my shelf because I literally would go and read different books all the time because I would try one for a little while. And then I'd just be like, no, that's not working. And I'd try something else. And so I ended up, my trainer was like, you know, you should try intermittent fasting. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, well, it's a pattern of eating where you restrict the hours that you eat. And he's like, just try to do eight hours where you only eat in eight hours. And then he's like, then bring it down to six hours where you only eat in six hours. And so I didn't lose any weight in the first three weeks, which is surprising, but it just kind of, we call it the whoosh effect. It was like, I just didn't lose weight, didn't lose weight. And then all of a sudden, I think I lost like six or eight pounds. It was something crazy like that once I got on the scale and I ended up losing 30 pounds and have kept it off ever since. And it's funny because I just, this past week, my husband was like, Chantel, you you really look extra skinny. And I got on the scale and I, this past week, I lost another five pounds. And I was like, oh my gosh, I, he, you know, cause my husband, you know how they are. They'll be like, babe, you look super skinny. Just so he'll have, I'll be like, really? And then like, that's kind of his like code word to have sex with me, you know? But I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. I actually did lose weight. And um, so, yeah, I just, I finally have come to a place where, you know, I don't count calorie. I don't count calories. I recognize true hunger. I'm not overeating. I've ditched all the yo-yo dieting and I'm not doing meal plans where I'm like prepping my food. You know, it drives me crazy. These people who like prep their food like one day for the rest of the next seven days, they're eating like the same thing. And so I didn't want to be like that. And so I, what I had actually did is I did the intermittent fasting, but I also interviewed about a thousand women. And I said, what do you do? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And every one of them did some sort of intermittent fasting. And they didn't ever call it intermittent fasting. They'd say things like, you know, I probably am not really hungry. So I probably don't start eating till 11. And then the next girl will be like, you know, I just usually have coffee for breakfast. And then I probably don't start eating till 12 or whatever it was. And they never called it intermittent fasting. But I realized from learning what these girls did, they, one of the pieces with, was intermittent fasting, but it's not the only piece. And then I took all the rest of the pieces that they did. And I wrote a book called Waste Away Through Intermittent Fasting. And then I wrote another book called One Meal in a Tasting. And again, it was just kind of the second version of what I got out of um, all these women. And that's all I did is I just interviewed them. And these were all people who were naturally thin. They were not on yo-yo diets. And I literally took tips. I'll give you even one tip like that I learned from one of them that you would be like, whoa, I can't believe that you found that tip out. But like one of the girls was eating soup and she's like, when I eat soup, I never fill the entire spoon with the soup. She's like, I, I, with the spoon, I fill half of it up with soup and that's how she ate it. So it's just all these little hacks that I learned from these women I wrote down in a book. And that's kind of what got me started. 
Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, for those of you listening, Chantal and I have been connected since what, about 2017, 2018 for a long yeah. time. And Chantal really is someone who I look to for tips on weight loss and intermittent fasting and all these things. And I, you shared so many great tidbits. I'd just like to unpack a couple of things. The whole trying component, whether it's a new diet or whether it's a new skincare product that you saw an ad for, it's about being consistent. And it's about being consistent in a way that's actually optimized for your specific needs. So I don't really like this word, trying. I like to rephrase it, trialing and listening to see what your body feels good with. And uh, you mentioned the word skinny. So some people are probably maybe perhaps feeling a little bit triggered out there. So, so let's break this down. The way I frame the word skinny, or when I look at myself and I'm happy with my body composition, it's, you know, I can see my muscles, I have good definition, and I'm not puffy. And I really actually do like this component of intermittent fasting. That's about a six to eight window for eating that feels really good for me and also a thing that I do first thing in the a.m is a scoop of protein in my collagen so that's you know 20 grams of protein right off the bat that might be breaking a fast in some people's eyes but it just makes me feel better and one meal in a tasting I love that you mentioned this because generally my largest meal is either lunch or dinner but I don't have like two big meals throughout the day and then to add to your spoon tip, for those of you tuning in, you know I te teach member in my membership tips on etiquette and communication, and not just looking great, but presenting as your best self. And did you know this, Chantel, that proper etiquette is actually with your fork tip down instead of pointing up so you're, so you're not shoveling food in your mouth? You have the fork tip down, and then you load the fork with food so each bite that I take is actually a bit of a smaller bite as well. So it's funny how things like just little things, and I'm sure you'll start talking about this now because you always like to learn about these little tips and tricks, but good etiquette is actually going to slow down your eating so you're not eating too quickly. And I just wanted to point that out. Now, I wanted to ask you with, in regards to all of these beautiful women that you've interviewed, not to mention the hundreds of experts in the space of health and wellness. You know, we're part of the same health collaborative community. We have been for many years with some of the biggest names out there. What are some of the common things that you also see that go beyond, you know, what you're eating, but really the lifestyle, the emotion, the energy, the radiance, when you connect with certain women and they just have this this glow about them, this radiance about them, that's a little bit different from the rest. They don't look at food in like an extreme or eating disorder type of way, which is unhealthy, but they have maybe a healthier relationship to food. So think about that word for a second, radiance. And maybe a couple of examples of women who you've interviewed that have a great body composition, they're emotionally regulated. What are some of the things that they're doing in their life to, to help promote radiance and what is radiance to you? So one of the things that I would say that I learned from the women that I interviewed is that they don't eat food for any other reason than fuel for their body. So they're not eating because they're stressed or they're unhappy or they're excited or they're using it to celebrate they are truly learning and they are only using food to eat when the stomach is truly hungry, not when their heart is hungry. And so they wait on true stomach hunger. And so when they wait on true stomach hunger, it's almost like, <clears throat> you know, if you went like if that you were going to get gas, right? So I have a Tesla now, so I don't ever get gas in my car, but if you were, getting... I do hope you're wearing your EMF protective clothing <laughs> in your top. Yes, I don't go in the car that much. So that's good for that. But um, the, you know, if I was going to go and put, if my, if I just filled up my tank and then somebody said to me, oh, but I just made these amazing brownies, go ahead and 
and eat these brownies. That would be like you filling up your tank filled with gas and then going back in and putting more gas. What would happen? It That gas tank would just completely overflow and you would just make like a huge mess. And so that's kind of what happens with us sometimes is that when we're using food for other reasons, like filling up our heart, I always say we have a, a God-shaped hole in our heart and we try to fill that with all kinds of different things, right? And if you have an eating issue, you're probably trying to fill that with food. Amen. And so what happens is, is that you want to learn to go, okay, I'm going to only eat when my stomach is full and the amount that it takes is so much less than you think. And one of the things that I, that I just realized that I've been doing um, that I just kind of lost this last five pounds was that I was making sure that every time I ate, I, and it wasn't even like consciously, but it's one of the tips that I give in the book is to wait until your stomach growls. Because when your stomach growls, you know, my body is hungry. I'm not hungry because of all these other reasons, because I'm stressed or I'm sad. And so I would hear my stomach growl a several times. And then I was like, okay, I think I'm going to go get something to eat now. And I just have been, been a little bit, actually a little sad. My aunt just passed away and she was like a mother to me and I've just been extraordinarily busy. And so, you know, the old Chantel would have used food to kind of stuff those problems down. And so one of my friends, uh, she's a counselor, her name's Kristen. And she always says, if you want to avoid disease, you have to sit with unease. So if you want to sit with unease, you'll avoid the disease. And just being able to sit with that unease of like, you know, me being so sad that my aunt is gone and not running to food to fill that and just being like, yes, I am really sad that she's gone. And I just have to sit with that unease right now to be able to um, not use food as a tool and only for using it when I'm truly hungry. And so I think that's really one of the tricks that, that it, the book teaches, but it also just really gets into the mind of someone who's thin. And like, it, it's unbelievable what I've learned from, from these women. And so these are not my ideas these are all these other women that they, it comes naturally to them, but I just wrote them all down in a book. And just after interview, after interview, I figured out what these, what some of these girls, you know, did and how they ate. And one of them is just slowing down, just the, how slow they ate. So my aunt is so funny. Um, she used to say to me all the time, she'd be like, Chantel, slow down. Nobody's taking the food from you. She would say that to me over and over and over again because I ate so fast. I never realized how full I was. And so one of the girls in my book, her name's Catherine. She was actually Miss Virginia um, probably like 15 years ago and has like an incredible body. But I <clears throat> share the story about her and she, one, one day we were at, at lunch and we were at lunch or dinner, I can't remember. And we were all sitting there and literally she pushed about 10 minutes in, five minutes in, I can't remember. She pushes her food away and the waitress comes by and she's like, are you all done? She's like, no, I'm just going to pick at it for a little bit. Thank you. And then she would pick like one little bite and then she'd start talking and then, you know, she'd go and go. And then the waitress came back. She's like, are you done with your food? She's like, no, I'm still picking at it. Thank you. And that happened like three or four more times. And, she, you know, if you looked at her, she took a full 30 minutes and decided when she was full. So she stopped after about five to seven minutes, started talking, pushed away that food. and then you know, maybe I am still a little bit hungry, picked out another bite or two and, and go from there. But those are the kind, I actually even videoed, I, I have a video course where I actually go out to lunch with some of these people and you can see exactly what they do. And it's, it's a mind blowing, honestly, with some of these tricks that they do. And I, I just, 
picked them all up and I was like, wow, this is awesome. Oh, that's great. I love that you mentioned feel for the body. And I'd say about a year, year and a half ago, I really started to get conscientious about what I eat. This might sound a little controversial, but for years, I felt like I was eating salads all day, every day, but I was eating, you know, the wrong types of greens. There were tomatoes in there. There were peppers, there was kale, there was spinach, which are high in oxalates and are actually inflammatory for the body. So then when I actually just started to look at what I'm eating as fuel, and this is important because we don't want to put the wrong octane in the vehicle, right? So say you drive a luxury vehicle, you're going to be putting premium in that. And you, the vehicle is not going to run great on regular fuel. I mean, that's kind of an easy example to look at. But once I started to also look at just as what you're saying, what I'm putting in my body for fuel, I started to spend less money on food that really wasn't even high in nutrient value. And then I started to notice that I was eating less because I moved towards more high protein, which was also interesting. So more white non-GMO rice instead of potatoes or sweet potatoes or other forms of carbohydrates. And uh, it's funny, you mentioned going out for lunch and observing people. I was at this beautiful event last week. It was, you know, an entrepreneurial event, getting clarity on who we are and what we are here to do and how we serve people. So I eat really well, right? With that high octane mentality, putting the right fuel in the tank. I do that about 90 to 99% of the time. And here we are at the end of the event. It's a dinner. My girlfriend arrived before I did because I had to take a call and she had ordered some short ribs and I love me some beef. I'm blood type O, my body loves beef. And so here I was, yes, I did order a little glass of champagne. I don't typically eat alcohol or drink alcohol. Many of you know that, but if I do, it's going to be champagne. It doesn't have the glyphosates. And this woman was watching me eat the short ribs and she was just in awe. Like there were about three or four other women watching me eat short ribs with, you know, excellent etiquette. And I was eating it slowly and enjoying every bite. And so that would have been a good one for you to, um, for you to have recorded. And, you know, I didn't have sauce all over my mouth and yes, there's probably canola oil in that sauce. And um, I love what you said about the unease. Getting comfortable with discomfort is not only a sign that you're evolving, but also the unease and feeling a little bit of hunger or feeling a little bit cold when you're doing your cold therapy or feeling a little bit hot when you're doing your sauna sessions or detox bath. What this does is it stimulates hormesis, with that, which then helps to stimulate autophagy which helps to prune out the cells that need to go. So I totally agree with you on that. Now, what do you think about how I'm eating now? Over the last year and a half or so, I've been eating this way, really high protein, not as many greens as I used to, sticking with my mainly rice, but really supplementing the key nutrients that I need so that I'm putting fuel in my body. What's your take on that? Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. You know, I think that for me, I have to be really careful with lectins and oxalates. And so, you know, I try to eat healthy fats. I try to eat grass-fed meats. I always try to avoid sugar and grains and processed foods. And, um, you know, there's certain things that I do eat and I, I try to figure out what do I feel best eating. And so a lot of it's a little bit in trial and error. And like you said, like, you know, we were all taught like eating a ton of kale is like a really good thing. And for me, I don't feel amazing when I eat too much kale. So I'll have a green juice every once in a while that has kale in it but it's a juice. So it's easier for me to absorb. And I don't feel terrible when I eat that. But again, there's certain vegetables that I now don't eat as much of. And I, I really just see how do I feel when I eat this? And so for me, eating foods that are too high in oxalates, um, too high in lectins, I just don't feel great. And so i I really kind of analyze how do I feel when I eat this? And I do know that when I eat 
more protein, um, I definitely am more satiated. So the more protein I can eat, the more satiated I am. Um, I'd love to hear like a, a typical day for you of what a typical day is of what you eat. And then I'll share with you what my typical day is. Oh, I love this. I feel like I'm getting some nutritional insights here. <laughs> and this, this recording is so timely because I just got off the call with a girlfriend. Uh, we work together and she's like, oh, you know, I'd really love to lose like 15 pounds I put on. And so right off the bat, it's just, you know, what's worked for me and what we continue to hear, especially in our, our health community with practitioners really looking into the biometric evidence that we should be eating for our blood type and our DNA and our epigenetics, not just what the agricultural industry is telling us to eat like kale and quinoa. And so I mentioned her, you know, cut back the alcohol. If you're going to drink, it's got to be organic French or Italian wine. None of this North American wine nonsense with 80 different ingredients you don't know about. Switch your carb to rice, go high protein. So grass fed beef, this is also what I eat too. Grass fed beef, wild caught salmon, eggs and sardines in um, spring water. Those are my main protein sources. And limiting the juice. Limiting the juice is really key because that's just empty calories. So instead of a juice, I'll go for a superfood drink such as from Organifi. And Organifi is also today's sponsor of the show. Head on over to Organifi.com, not with the Y, but with an I, forward slash Varga and use code Varga to save 20% off your superfood and adaptogenic fruit, superfood formulas. I love them. They taste so good. So I'll have that. It's kind of like a treat instead of juice. And just slowing down with the way I eat. So typical day is I will wake up and I'll boil the kettle, glass kettle, reverse osmosis, filtered water. I might structure it ahead of time with the analema wand. And then I'll have a cup. I'm actually still working on one right here of organic lemon juice and maybe like a teaspoon of honey. Fill that um, cup up with hot water and I'll sip on that. And I'll drink actually lemon juice throughout the day to help cut the oxalates that you mentioned, which are really prevalent in a lot of greens and foods that we eat. It's kind of difficult to avoid. And then I'll make my coffee in, again, glass kettle, glass French press, love danger coffee. And then I'll add a scoop of protein powder, a scoop of collagen. And then today I was a little hungry. So I had about two tablespoons of 2% organic cottage cheese. Again, getting that protein in every step of the way. Some people say, you know, don't, don't eat dairy. I choose to eat dairy because in that case, cottage cheese, it's a really easy, high protein source for me. And I just feel good with it. And then later today, say, for example, I might have like a cauliflower crust pizza or for example, uh, one scoop of cottage cheese, two eggs, whip it up, put that on a baking sheet with you know some organic onion seasoning, and then bake it for 35 minutes at 350. And boom, you have either a beautiful wrap to put you know your romaine lettuce with a homemade Caesar dressing with avocado oil mayonnaise base with maybe a little bit of chicken. I don't have chicken a lot, but I might put uh, some salmon in there, something like that. And then I'll have like basically a protein on protein wrap with that cottage cheese. So that's been a really good hack for me. So I tend to do that or like a wild caught salmon baked with rice. And, um, you know, maybe if I do have a little bit of a salad with it, it's going to be romaine or arugula for the most part. So that's kind of what a typical day looks like. And then I'll be drinking about two liters of water a day with actually about a liter of water before bed. And then throughout the day, I'm taking my supplements. So in the AM, I'm going to be having my NAD. I might take qualia mind. And then in the PM is when I take most of my supplements. So that's the majority of my antioxidants and other things like magnesium. Antioxidants, omegas are typically, I take those in the evening and I always sleep better. So that's the day in the life of what I consume throughout the day. It's pretty typical. But then I live a little when I'm out and, you know, out with friends at that event, like I mentioned, but I always notice a difference mm. in my belly with how I feel. Just kind of feels a little like tight, a little full, not quite as good as when I eat my regular food too. 
What do you think? Yeah, I love it. I, I agree a hundred percent. I, I think for me, um, I would just add to that. And I know you do too. I really eliminate vegetable oils. You know, a vital piece of a great diet is that vegetable oils wreak havoc on the human body and they're everywhere with the modern Western diet and nearly every processed food contains vegetable oils including canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, grapeseed oil, sesame oil. And even um, there's the, some of these healthy places are saying uh, they're substituting because canola oil has such a bad rap that they're calling it rape seed oil because people don't haven't heard of that yet. And so they're trying to make it out to be healthy. But those oils, rapeseed is basically just like canola. And these oils contain an unnaturally high amount of polyunsaturated fatty acids. And I think that they are one of the primary drivers of metabolic dysfunction. I would agree with you. I'm so fastidious about like, I don't buy a lot of packaged things at all. And I'm always searching the ingredients list and I put more things back on the shelves than what I take home. What are your thoughts on avocado oil? You know, it's so funny because I do use avocado oil, but I will say really the, the, the oils that I use are either tallow, butter, ghee, olive oil, coconut oil. Um, the thing about olive oil or, or avocado oil, you just have to make sure you purchase them from reputable sources because many of the grocery stores, they cut their products with soybean, canola, and mm -hmm. other seed oils, and they they put it in there. So you just have to be really careful that like, what is the brand and olive, olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil are, you know, not near as bad as vegetable seed oils, but they do, um, contain, um, some things in there that could irritate and be sensitive. Like almost any gut that I know can handle tallow, butter, or ghee. And, yeah. uh, but, but I definitely eat olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil as well. All three of those I'm fine with. My son actually just, he's been an influencer for a company called Masa Chips. Um, and so he, it's so funny. He's the number two influencer for the entire company. And they're made, the chips are made with organic corn, but they're made with beef tallow. And like he, you know, if people put the coupon code Kyle, he gets a, a discount. He's making like thousands of dollars a month now from being like the number two influencer in that company. But finally, people are really learning that how to, and, and sometimes you just, you know, you want a good tortilla chip, you know? And so you're like, and, and they're really delicious. And so he'll, you know, if you're going to eat a tortilla chip, that's the best that you can possibly get because they're made, they're made with beef tallow. And so to me, beef tallow or butter, um, are one of the best things that, that you can have for your gut. And it's so much better than all those canola oils and, and other things like that. So I would say that's a real big thing for me. Um, you know, sleep and recovery is, is really important for me. I have an aura ring and I get a crown almost every single night. Is it on airplane mode, Chantal? Yes, it is on yeah, airplane mode. So you're airplane not getting blasted night. with yeah. EMFs. Good job. Yes, I do. So, you know, quality sleep is just vital for our body to heal and recover. So I just really try to get really great sleep. Um, I do try to, um, walking is, oh, I did want to say this about the canola, the oil. I can't remember if I said this or not, but they, the study that they just did said that you eating a large French fry from McDonald's is as toxic because of the seed oil as smoking 25 cigarettes. And so I used to, I would say I wouldn't have seed oils, but maybe once a month or once every other month, meaning like, let's say we were all out and we, you know what I mean? Like someone's like, oh my gosh, these are the best fries I've ever had. Try these. You know, I'd be like, all right, well, I haven't had any seed oils in a long time. So I'd have a few fries or I'd have a few this or a few that. 
But now, since I've heard that study about that, I just, now I'm a little more fanatical about it. And I think if you look at it with those kind of lenses that go, eating one big thing of fries like that could be as toxic as 25, smoking 25 cigarettes, then that's a really big deal. So um, I would say the other thing that I do on a daily basis is not, not daily, but I'd say th at least three to five days a week, we do have our own sauna and, you know, heat exposure has a lot of really big benefits. I mean, just, it enhances your detoxification pathways. Um, it upregulates glutathione production. It increases your heat shock proteins. Um, and it also enhances mitochondrial adaptation. And so, I just really try to get that in. Um, and we also do, me and my husband do a lot of cold exposure together. So um, in the winter time, we would get, we would just go in our pool in our backyard naked together at like 5 a.m. And when it was cold and now we're getting ready to get um, a cold plunge. We haven't gotten ours yet, um, but we, now we just do cold showers together. So we, that's if you don't have like a cold plunge and you're like, oh my gosh, I mean, some of these cold plunges are, you know, the fancy ones are like $8,000, you know, so they're not cheap. Um, and you can make your own. That's a lot cheaper, but you can literally just do the same thing with just taking a cold shower and just getting the cold shower right on you and on your face and on your body and just say, okay, I'm going to do that for three to four minutes. And I mean, everyone has access to do that. You don't have to have any machine or fancy tools to do that. So, um, I would just say the only other thing that I really try to do with my, with, with, um, dairy, if I can get raw dairy, I will, I, I don't do great with dairy. So I just try not to have a ton of it. Um, but when I can, I'll have kind of raw dairy and sometimes my body can handle it. And sometimes it can't, it's just, I'm kind of weird. Like, like sometimes I know I can, and it it's also about just how much stress I'm under, you know, your body can only take so much of a load. And I know that certain times, if I need to be at the very top, a top, top, top of my game, there's certain things that I'll avoid. So I just know how I feel when I eat different things and I just try to avoid those things that are going to make me not be at the top of my game. When you mentioned your aunt uh, or someone else who made those brownies, it feels a little bit funny when you first start to really employ your boundaries around what makes you feel good. And especially when you're in social or family situations, when someone's taking the time to cook this incredible meal. And, you know, maybe there's a dish with foods that saved in the biome past and certain greens or things aren't good for you. Just leave that off your plate and double up on something else that they've made that, that's better for you. But oh, wait, I have, have a great kind of... story for that. I have a great story. Oh, for that. yeah. Go so, for it. So one of my friends, her name's Christy. She's super skinny and has like a perfect, perfect body. Um, she's just, she's. I think she's like 47, but just looks absolutely amazing. And we used to do this thing called um, Thursday Fun Day. And I would make guacamole and I make just really great, great guacamole. And so I'd bring it and I would notice every time when I bring it, she'd say, Chantel, can I see? She'd say, thank you for bringing it. She said, I really want this guacamole, but I'm not hungry right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to scoop some of this guacamole out. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and I'm going to have it when I'm hungry, but right now I'm not. And so that, like, that's a perfect example of a hack that I learned from her. She wasn't hungry right then, but she knew if she didn't, my guacamole, no joke, people literally I'd put the guacamole down within five minutes, it'd be gone. So she knew if she left the guacamole in five minutes, it'd be gone. She wouldn't get any, but she wasn't going to eat when she wasn't hungry. So she just took it, put some in the refrigerator in a little container and said, I'm going to eat this afterwards. So that's like another hack that people can do that is super, super good, you know? Oh, I love that. I'm glad that you mentioned sleep and I'm glad that you mentioned emotions and all of these things. I'm glad that you mentioned cold therapy. 
because when we kind of started this episode, you know, when people are going through different times in their lives, maybe they'll put on some weight, maybe they'll lose some weight. So one of the things for all of you listening that I'd encourage you to do is to not actually point out anybody if they've put on weight or lost weight, because there could be some things going on in their lives emotionally that we would just end up triggering and, and all of these things. So just something to consider, like if you've seen someone experience a weight fluctuation, just ask them, you know, how are things? How are you doing? Is there anything I can help you with? Instead of saying, oh, you've lost a lot of weight. You look fantastic because even though they've lost weight and look fantastic compared to, you know, society's definition of thin or skinny, it could actually be kind of unhealthy for them. So our emotions really do also impact inflammation and the way to, I think, really become very good at overcoming stress is through cold therapy to tone your vagus nerve. So something cheap and easy, get a bowl, get a salad bowl, put some ice in it, put some water in it, dunk your face in for a couple of minutes. If say you live in somewhere warm and it's hard to get that cold shower, like I experienced in South Florida. And the other thing I want to add is peanut butter and nuts. And a lot of people eat nuts or peanut butter thinking that, oh, they're high in protein. But a lot of times nuts are stored in silos and they end up going moldy. Not to mention the peanut butter, the oil at the top, it's probably gone rancid. So what are your thoughts? If, if you're looking for an alternative to peanut butter, say something like um, pumpkin seed butter, what are your thoughts on like a spread? Yeah. <clears throat> for me, I don't do well on nuts. First of all, even just eating nuts, I know I can get out of control with them for whatever reason. I, in the past have like, you know, will eat them Wait, I'll eat them too fast. I wouldn't chew them fully. And it's very easy to overdo it on nuts. So I definitely just kind of avoid peanut butter. I, it's just too much mold. I avoid almond butter. I don't eat that. I am a fan of pumpkin seeds because I think that they um, are really good for killing parasites in your gut. And so I am a fan of pumpkin seeds. So I would prefer to just eat the pumpkin seed. You can actually get raw ones and roast them at home um, with some fresh Celtic sea salt. That is like absolutely to die for. So if I'm going to have a seed, that would probably be it. But I'm with you. I don't eat peanuts at all. I don't eat peanut butter. I'm not a fan of almond butter um, because it's it's a lot of calories and it's there's just so many other nutrient dense foods that I would choose over that for a multitude of reasons. A lot of what you just mentioned. Yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned the almond situation too, because you know we've been told by probably the agricultural industry that almonds are good for you, but they're actually high in a lot of anti nutrients. And you want to make sure you're spending your money on foods that are going to be filling your gas tank with the right octane, as opposed to something that's going to lead to that inflammation, which is then also going to result in puffiness and weight gain and hormone dysregulation, nervous system dysregulation, the list goes on. So I was hoping you were going to mention parasites when I mentioned pumpkin seeds. And in my journey, when I actually did my first parasite cleanse, I think it's about 2021, a couple of weeks after that, you know, I was on this parasite detox for, for a long time. And a couple of weeks in, it was like, wow, I didn't know how good I could feel. And then from that, I then reduced oxidative stress, air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, started eating the right foods for my body composition. Not what a past nutritionist told me or what social media was telling me is the best diet to stay slim and healthy this made the world of difference for me is clearing out parasites. And in my research, looking at the different work of parasitologists, 80% of North Americans have parasites. And actually with any sort of sign of gut disturbance, like irritable bowel syndrome, issues with you know regular bowel movements, being constipated or having loose stools, these can actually all be signs of an imbalance from a parasite level. But before doing a parasite detox or any kind of like true detox, sort of like kit, you really want to focus on purifying your environment first and eating the right foods and then looking at detoxing. But that truly was 
doing the parasite detoxing and then switching to more high protein, less salads, more high protein has made a world of difference for me. And actually, what was this last year? I was invited to walk runway alongside some of my professional uh, runway model friends. And with honestly, without even trying, I fit in the clothes. And I was like, how is this possible? Like I'm not dieting. I'm eating in a way that's healthy for me. Like you mentioned, I was saunaing a number of times a week as well. And it was just easy for me to be slim. And I never thought that was possible for me to actually fit into these clothes without trying. So it's about, well, it's not without trying, but it's about creating these habits. And so what you've said this whole time of just doing things to allow us to feel our best, notice how you feel after you eat certain foods. Are you in pain? right? After two car crashes, I, I have to eat this way so that I don't have headaches and I don't hurt. And then the body composition starts to also show you that you're doing things appropriately as well. So I know Chantal, we're going to have a part two here on the show because there's lots of other things that I'd love to get into with you. And, you know, this was a really fun episode to record and really share some of those body composition, nutrition, diet, lifestyle tips that I know many of you have been asking about. Where can people learn more about you, Chantel, and uh, get a copy of your book? Yeah. So if they go to ChantelRayWay.com, um, I've written four books so far, and um, all of them are about there, I'm getting ready to write a new book. It's called Delegate Everything But Sex, but that's on a totally different topic. But um, I wrote the the first book was called Waste Away Through Intermittent Fasting. And then the next one I wrote was called Fasting to Freedom. And it was just all about just straight fasting for, for other purposes, really about breaking strongholds, um, how to discern God's voice. And then I wrote a book called One Meal and a Tasting. And that book kind of was like what you talked about, um, where, you know, a lot of times people would still be doing intermittent fasting, but they wouldn't be losing weight because they were eating like two huge meals or, you know, two huge meals and then another snack and another snack compressed into a window. So that kind of breaks that down. And then another one's just kind of a Bible study that's called freedom from food. And, you know, there's just so many things that I've learned from these women. Like I said, you know, I used to blaze through meals, like there was a prize for the first clean plate, you know, it was like, I'm the winner, I'm the winner. And <laughs> that's how I ate. And it was watching these women, you know, and real them realizing that digestion begins in your mouth. And as you chew your food, you know, your digestive enzymes and the saliva is what break down your food to allow for the absorption of the nutrients, even things like that, that they realized and how important all those things are. I was able to just compile them from their brain and kind of put it into writing. So it's it's been a blessing to be able to have friends and meet so many friends from doing that. And, um, so yeah, I was grateful to be on your show and I'm, I'm grateful for your friendship. I've, it's funny cause uh, you know, if you're listening to this, I met Rachel in the bathroom and in the first 10 seconds, we met at this conference. We were both there for the first time. And I was like, instantly, like, I love this girl. Like we are just so aligned on every level. So I just am grateful for you and grateful for your friendship. And I just, um, think that you are beautiful on the inside and out. And I'm blessed to be able to call you friend. Thank you so much for that, Chantel. Um, I warmly received that lovely compliment. And I'd say that's the highest compliment when you make someone feel happy and happy to be around you. It's, it's the energy. And that's what we talk about here on the show over and over again. It's about this radiance piece. How can we be our best on the inside and out? Lead by example. So I'm sure many of you are going to be taking these nutrition tips into your family life and help your families be happier and healthier and more clear-headed. And the more pure we are, the greater our ability to connect on the energetic and spiritual level as well. And of course, both Chantal and I are, are Christians here. It's a big part of what we do um, in a service as well. So thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. 
learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com. And for some of those test kits and Organifi and other things that can support you with purifying your environment, head on over to theschoolofradiance.com, where you can also book a one-on-one -on -one with me, join my seasonal skin tutorials, and also the membership for showing up in a very particular way to be received by others in the highest form possible, which is actually what Chantel just identified in me. And so you can do that too to make beautiful friends along your journey. Love you all so much. And we'll see you all again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.